I'm here to introduce the lovely and talented Paul McGillian, Terrell Rothery, and David Hewlett for the first
that's been keeping me busy. So we just wrapped, as I say, in July. So I've been enjoying my summer with my six-year-old, who's going on seven, who's actually going on 17. <laughs> so uh, that's that's my life, basically, in a nutshell. Who's that? I know. And somebody's so Can we all just keep it down? He's sleeping at the front. How <laughs> the heck did you get him to sleep? I know. <laughs> I think your your story. You know how he. <laughs> you know how he fell Shots asleep. Fired. He fell asleep as soon as David walked out. I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, what a sweet heart. All right, enough of this beautiful little boy. Now that's really that's putting out the count now. Um, like Ter like Terrell and David, um, well I have two little ones, a little three year old, a little, little baby girl as well. Amazing. Uh, my wife is fantastic with the babies, and uh, my nipples are killing me from all the breastfeeding. Uh, and you know what? The image. It's not that bad. Um, just did a, I did a Hallmark Christmas movie just recently, just finished Aww. that. And that'll make everybody cry and laugh and just have tissues and Christmas time. It's beautiful. Uh, and a movie, a show called Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. Have you guys seen that? No. It's on Bravo. It's kind of like Sex in the City, sort of. Oh, cool. It's good. Um, recurring on that show, and you, you don't have sex, though, do you? Are you asking? He has a baby. Because I have a restraining order on you after duet. On <laughs> time. Is there nudity? It's a series. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Is there nudity? Oh, is there nudity? Yeah, this is in a movie. <laughs> is there nudity? It's a series. Hey. Dude, <laughs> we're Dragon Con. Yes, there's nudity. If it's on HBO. Isn't this panel going well? Yeah. Oh God! Somebody asks us a question and stop this. Yes, it's, this is your hour. This is your hour. So who's going to step forward and ask us something? So, indeed, we'll be ha open it up for a What a great looking group! I gotta say that. Great group. Yeah, very nice. Hey, right body here, lovely. Thank you very much. This little sweetheart to you, but for you, come on. Six years old. Look at you. All right, any questions? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, we are going to go ahead and have people line up for questions because I know everybody has something they want to ask every single person on the stage except for myself. <laughs> so if we could go ahead and have our people with the microphones heading out. We have the lovely Heather over here. Yay! <laughs> line up behind the lovely Heather and get your questions in now. And then we also have the lovely Kim over here. Yay! Find up behind the lovely Kim. And in the meantime, uh, we've had a couple questions oh. come up about a few things, okay. just generally speaking. Really? Um, since we have been privileged now to have you here for all of a few minutes, and that's awesome, we want to continue that theory and go with questions about some of your projects. We already covered that. Well, specifically, there are a couple questions about the experience of working with that gentleman again and stuff like Doug's Breakfast. And also, we wanted to talk about debug a little bit. Mm. If you want to share your thoughts, a couple things about that. Well, yeah, where should we start? What? So what a litany of questions. Why don't you start, David? Why don't we start? Well, we've got people lining up for questions. Right? Okay, let's right. do that. <laughs> <laughs> you just uh, negated everything she said. <laughs> I didn't hear what she said. Up. I just feel you bad. know which character is the most like his character on the show? Right there. It's called N A R. No acting required. <laughs> the dog's doing well. Debug's fun. See it. And uh, first question. <laughs> Hi, I know you. My name's Connie. I'm married. Well, glad to <laughs> No, but I know you've been to so many cons and you've been asked so many questions, and I thought it would be fun for us to hear the most unusual question that you've ever had, something that you enjoyed answering. Oh. The most, so you put us on the spot to come Thanks. up with the most. Thank you, Connie. Thanks, Connie. Let's Way go to back turn to the Karen's table. question. Are you a Karen? Karen? <laughs> Way to turn the tables. The most unusual question? Somebody oh, asked me what my favorite vegetable was. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Zucchini! Well, I I'm, gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to jump in here. Terrell appreciate this. We're in Germany at a convention. We had a great time. 
FedCon, fun convention. If you ever get a chance to go to Germany, do it. Um, and this gentleman has a big crush on Terrell, as many of them do. He was a sailor, full uniform on, and I remember watching Cyril, and he was coming up to the table, I could see him, he was like, he's like just getting ready to meet her, he was like, like sweating, you know, just getting ready, and preening himself, you know, and just, I could see he was so nervous, right? And he gets to the table, I'm like, I'm going to watch this, and he goes, I, 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 I don't tell all three, she's like, yes, and he's like, so nice to meet you, oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind, you're so beautiful, and I made something for you, and... He gives it to her in a box, and he goes, should I open it? He goes, no, just open it later, it's for you. So, <laughs> Terrell and I go back uh, to the hotel, we're having a little drink, and, and you know, just winding down. I said, open up that box. <laughs> She's like, no, I said, open it. Because he told me what it was, and I knew what it was, but she didn't. So she, op she opens it up, and it's a dress that he has sewn for her. If she was seven foot tall. <laughs> Terrell, I go, you have to put that on right now. So the good sport that she is, she goes into the washroom, <laughs> comes out, and it's a dress made of like a burlap, like potato sack kind of. And it's totally square. It has two holes for the arms, and it has about two feet of extra yarn for the bottom. And it's, you know, Enormous. She comes up and her little head is sticking out, her arms, and this thing is square, right? I'm like, lose it. I'm like, oh my god. I wish I had a picture of it. The next day, I go, Terrell, you. Next day, he comes up and goes, Did you open up the gifts? <laughs> I go, Yeah, she sure did, and it looks beautiful on her. Bless his heart. Yes. He sewed it with his own hands, it was green. And have any of you seen the movie Box Trolls? Yeah. That's what I look like. Unbelievable. Yeah. But well, we knew Terrell would look good in burlap. I mean, it's true. You know, she's she's burlap sack. Look good in anything. Oh, boy. Sorry? <laughs> now they're married. <laughs> I got scented pillows, handmade scented pillows. Did you? But they were very handmade. <laughs> there was actually like. They were s sort of sweaty. They, had, they were actually like finger marks on oh. these. And, they, and whatever he put in them was... Oh. Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, no, how do you know that? Did you actually sleep with those balls? Oh, they're on my bed now. Because <laughs> okay. you know me, I'm not, I'm not as afraid of germs in any way. Or <laughs> You're not neurotic at all. I was like, oh, that's fantastic. I'm going to need to burn everything. <laughs> burn down the building. Um, I have been given scented pillows. Not really a question. Not really. I told you about uh, yesterday, some of the people here, about the, the, the gift that I got uh, about a fan. And like 99.9 .9 are amazing. And sometimes you get some of these little. And gave me the rubber glove, right? You got a rubber glove? Yeah. No, he had it on his hand. He asked me to sign it. Oh, dear God. And I said, can I ask you a question? He's like, yeah. I go, what do you do with it? He goes, well, I, I, I fill it up with contact cement and put it on the wall. I go, I go your mother's basement? He's like, yeah. I go, with all the other doctors from the sci-fi shows. So I wrote, Paul McGillian, Dr. Carson Beckett, help me. That's on a wall somewhere, right beside Paul Picardo. Okay, I gotta tell you this one. This one was, well, it's not bizarre, but there was that moment where I was like smiling and then I kind of went, I don't think this is quite right. It was this big, big, huge, like, curtain of my face it, it, as Major Frazier, not the doctor, the Major. And I went, that's, wow, that's, that's really cool. It's really big. Um, what are you going to do with it? And he said, well, I'm going to have it as my shower curtain. <laughs> Yeah, I love it, by the way. We, uh, I, it didn't cost me a lot, but I love it. <laughs> That's a little bit odd. Terrell never showered again. Never. I take baths only. I can't do digress. I had the same thing about David Hewlett. And, as you can tell, the questions are more sort of just lead us in a certain direction. I know. We, we, are, we yeah. always digress. I'm so sorry. Here we go. It's okay. I apologize in advance for our upcoming answer. <laughs> 
something to say to each of you. I'll say. Yes, you will. <laughs> that sounds good. David, why is your little sister so awesome? <laughs> I know it's shocking, right? I was unaware of the fact, but, um... She did learn from an excellent big brother, so... Yeah, she's amazing. Oh. She's I've, I've kissed both the Hewlett's. <laughs> and their mother. <laughs> What's so sad is it's true. <laughs> uh, next one for Terrell. I just wanted to let you know it is not short. It is vertically challenged, and you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm married. <laughs> you know what I like about you? Everything, you sexy little girl. Gorgeous. So wait a sec, so Paul gets I love you, I get my sister is awesome? <laughs> I love you even more now, thank you very much. Okay, get over here, come in and give me a hug for God's sakes. Get up here, right now, come on. I'm coming back to Dragon Con every year. Other people in the room who want to be close. Does anyone have any real questions? <laughs> Dom DeLuise in Ergo. And uh, yeah, he did this, the scene was in the, the boardroom and he was supposed, I'm not supposed to see him, only SG, the team, can see him. And Hammond and I can't see him, we're trying to find out what's going on with our, you know, co-workers. And Dom is sitting beside me and he's blowing in my ear. <laughs> Bring in my ear, doing all these things, and I just kept going and kept going and kept going. Cut, we got it, we printed it, and Dom turned to me and he said, Wow, you're good. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, well, you don't know what's going on on the inside of my cheeks here. But it was brilliant, so that was truly one of my, one of my favorite moments. Yeah. You want to go? You got, do, you have a, do you remember it? Do you remember what show we're talking about? <laughs> I quite liked getting on a plane with Jewel State to hang out with Neil deGrasse Tyson oh. and uh, <laughs> Bill Nye. Yeah. Kind of like a, a, geeky, a geeky, you know, top list right there, so. Second favorite? <laughs> it's a, I thought a scene from the show. The question was a scene from the show. Well, that was, well, I got the, it was, well, well scene. Oh, you're saying that hanging you, out with Jewel State. Yeah, that was, that was the, yeah, that's hurtful. Yeah. That hurt a lot. Exploding tumor. What a genius last, idea. Last time I checked, who flew Atlantis back in San Francisco Bay with the G technology? Thank you very much, Dr. Beckett. <laughs> so annoying. Um, one of my favorite little things I told us that we were in Chicago a few weeks ago with Rachel and Trell. Speak about memorizing lines and whatnot. With who? Rachel. Oh, I thought you said Terrell. I was going to go, what? It's all about you. <laughs> Terrell, oh, look, okay. some paper here. Yeah, here, draw a picture, okay? <laughs> Just listen to this. <laughs> this is actually funny. Um, episode called Poison in the Well, David was in the scene, and I, have to, I get, uh, we have a big monologue where I'm talking about going through the Stargate, and it was bloody insanity, going through a bloody Stargate, blah, 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 blah. Cut. And the, the DOP Grizz has to walk backwards, and Rachel has one word, and the word is 
who? It's actually three letters. I have this monster monologue. The DOP is like pouring sweat. We get it. Finally, Brad turns his direction. He goes, okay, you get a cut. And you keep on going back because there's lighting's not good and there's something bumping into something. Finally get one. We're all like hating it, right? We get there and uh, we're just like, um, I forgot my line. <laughs> I'm like, what? She goes, I, I, I didn't say my line. I go, you don't have a line. She goes, yes, I do. I go, no, you don't. You have a word. <laughs> who? So whenever I see Rachel, I look at her and I go, who? She's like, shut up, Polly. <laughs> Still, to this day. That was a beautiful moment. <laughs> I also right. like the moment when Jason oh, Momoa we went into David's trailer before David got there. Do you know about this one? No. This is great. David, you yeah, know. it was great. <laughs> <laughs> we were all there. And uh, I don't know, Jason just pulled tricks on people. And he turns the heat up to about 100 degrees in David's trailer, turns the water off. Jason was out the night before for a long night and took care of business in David's washroom and his toilet. David came onto the set about five hours later, walked into the trailer, and we were sitting outside, and all you hear is like, That was one of my favorite moments. Can I just say that I was here two years ago and I was seated between Richard Dean Anderson and Christopher Judge and we talked about farts. And now I'm stuck between these two. You're welcome, Karma. I think we should desperately go between another question. <laughs> For God's sake, someone ask me a question. Kelly, Kim has the question. It's all about the intellectual sci-fi, you know? I uh, just want to say we love you guys. Uh, yeah. David, if I can make a request, in the fifth row, my fiance Elizabeth loves you to death. Would you please say hello? Hello? Hello, Elizabeth, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> also, is there any news? Security. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, is there any news about an upcoming, are they going to do an Atlantis movie or reboot or yeah. anything? We miss you guys. We want the get back. I, I think it's safe to say we all miss it too. So, yeah. And then congratulations on the fiance thing, by the way. Yeah. Well, I like the way you slipped that in there. So did you guys have something you wanted to add to this conversation or were you talking amongst yourself? I just wanted to know why she's sitting up here. Well, you have to go back Where and ask you? the question. You oh, you had to walk back there. For the question. That's love. Oh. Yeah. You're a good guy. When's the big day? Soon. Oh, man. Oh. Run. Run, on the Run now. Hey. Why not right now? You know what I'm saying? We're here. David can marry. He's a guy. I'm married, unfortunately, but... Because you're gorgeous. I was talking to him. Um, You're very sweet. Thank you very much. All right, Heather, next question. That was a lousy question, though. It wasn't a question. Uh, my question is, if the Stargate program had to loan your, wanted to loan your character out to S.H.I.E.L.D. for some reason, and you had to work with one of the Avengers, which one would your character most like to work with and why? I'm always angry. <laughs> my son, we're watching the film, we're watching Avengers, and, and, and he, he, uh, Ruffalo says that line. My son turns to me and goes, Fun smash stuff. <laughs> oh, smash. <laughs> He's good. He's good. Avengers? Bond. Polly Bond. He's not an Avenger, you idiot. Whatever. <laughs> I like Thor. I've always liked Thor. Well, who does? It's kind of cool. I also like that character. Yeah, you're just like him. Yeah. <laughs> you got like blonde locks. <laughs> I can't pick up the hammer. <laughs> the hammer's really happy. <laughs> well, interpret that as you may, ladies. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love to 
Dragon Con. I watch Camp Lake Bottom. Ooh, that's that's whatever else you watch. Yeah. I watch Dino Trucks. <laughs> yeah, that's it too. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for kids. <laughs> you know Caillou? You guys have said no. Caillou? Oh, God. I find myself seeing that in my mind all, all the time. I wake up like. Yeah. <laughs> And now we are. Don't even think about whining. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we digressed again. <laughs> David, this is for you. Mika wanted me to ask you, why is the sky blue? <laughs> what? <laughs> How do we know that the blue you see is the blue I see? <laughs> that was good. Look it up. <laughs> Why is it always cloudy? Sometimes. It is cloudy sometimes. It's true. You want to come up? Oh. Because you're way more interesting than David. <laughs> Look, if you can't keep him in line. <laughs> All right, I'm with that next question. Daddy's mad. Um, I have, um, sorry. I have uh, actually two questions. It just, one just popped in my head. The first one is for all three of you. Um, I noticed going to panels the last time I came to Dragon Con, um, it seems to me that all of the actors, I went to BSG and Stargate and the whole, you know, Farscape, and everyone always talked about how blessed and lucky they felt to be a part of that show, I mean, part of this genre. And is that something that actors gravitate to because they have that interest, or do you guys just take whatever job? I mean, how is it that the people who end up in sci-fi acting end up being... I think it's a mix of the two, honestly. I think it's, I mean, I, I'm a nerd, so I, I sort of, I kind of... I, so I, I, I love science fiction, so I, I think it's almost like a coincidence that I got into it, but, but, um, because some people, I mean, you know, Flanagan was like, I'm not sure I understand this sci-fi stuff. <laughs> so he, well, Joe asked me after season four if my character was Scottish. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it's weird, but like not everyone is a nerd, so not everyone is into it in the way that, that I think some of us are. So, you know, but generally, I, I take what I can get, I and mean, actors yeah, do that. We do, know? but you know what? The blessing about sci-fi, this, this genre, is you guys. Yeah. And the fact that we're here, we don't get it. I mean, we've all done other types of work, but we don't get this opportunity to come out and say thank you so much for supporting us. And not only that, you guys, if, you're, if you are a fan of the show, and then you also like the characters, and consequently the actors, I've never seen such loyal people. You'll continue to follow us wherever we go with whatever show. So for me, personally, I am beyond grateful, and I can't thank you guys enough, seriously. Carol is running for politics right now as well. <laughs> And she sort of has a southern accent for some reason. I don't know where that came from. I don't have a southern accent. What are you, Joe Flanagan? <laughs> Carol for president. Carol has my vote. She's got a little bite. She's got a little bite in that one. No, but you, you know what? You, she's totally right. I mean, what a crazy fan base. I did not know doing the show. I remember talking to Martin Wood when I did the pilot. And I had done an episode of SG-1 before. Torment to Tantalus. British Littlefield. <laughs> You didn't know that, did you? Did what? Who, uh, sorry, were you talking? David's not even here. First person to go through the Star Gate, right? Yes. And I said, why can't all my friends in Vancouver going multiple times on the show, right? Uh, on, like playing different characters. Like, well, how come I never got back in again? He goes, well, you played Ernest Littlefield. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, have you done a convention before? I'm like, no. He goes, oh, okay. All right. And then I did a convention. I'm like, oh, okay. I get it. Which I never knew. And now we've been all over the world, all of us, multiple times, Australia, England, we've all hung out. It's the, you know, it's truly a gift that keeps on giving and meeting so many beautiful fans and that really support our careers outside of it. I know a lot of people watch uh, Terrell's show, Cedar Cove, 
and watch, you know, David's movie, Dog Breakfast, and, and all his projects that he's developed, and because we have such a great fan base, and that's very rare, you know what I mean? So we're very lucky. Seriously. Yeah, I'm lucky too. <laughs> he is very lucky. Dr. Good Start. <laughs> now that you've become a director, you have these two great movies and one sandwich in between. Um, can you discuss your role in uh, producing and directing Yeti? Rachel Ray Yeti? I, I would not call it a great film, <laughs> but it was a fun film. Um, this, well, you get the opportunity. It's, it's called Rage of the Yeti. Um, <laughs> Rage of the Yeti. Yeah. Now we've got that cleared up. Um, you don't have to rush out to see it. Um, but it was just an opportunity to go. It's just not often you get asked to go to Bulgaria and take a snowcat 7,000 feet up a mountain and get to direct a film. So I just couldn't resist it. Um, maybe I should next time. But, uh, uh, it's amazing. It was, it was absolutely, it was like director's boot camp. It was like insanely amazing. Um, and the, the cast were wonderful, and, the, and the, the, the crew hated me because I took away their alcohol. <laughs> oh, we were, we were 7,000 feet up a mountain, and we kept having white out snowstorms, and these guys would stagger off to have a pee, and you wouldn't see them again. <laughs> and so I said, you can't, you, you, we're good people, are gonna die. It's not worth dying for yetis. Um, so everyone they'd go like, mm hmm yes, yes, you want. I was like, look, dude, I know what's in the cup. There's no point in holding it away. Mm, what? No. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just an amazing, it was an amazing experience that was incredibly painful, as filmmaking generally is. But for some reason, if it doesn't hurt, you don't learn things. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a, uh, an odd way of putting it. But uh, it's, it, directing is just, is, is just an incredibly complex, Thing. It's just so many different skills involved, and I'm just looking forward to sort of putting them together and maybe getting it right one day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm watching the hands waving. Sorry, I missed that. Oh, yeah, the microphone, that would be good. Uh, Paul, how is David as a director? Because he was in one of his movies? <laughs> how, how, we don't have a time limit for this. Shut up, David. <laughs> First off, you're a very handsome man, and thank you for that question. <clears throat> now, I missed. I think I missed the. I couldn't understand. How is David as a director? Oh, how is he as a director? You. Oh, I'm Sh amazing. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. I'm fat. I'm amazing at it. Okay, I'll tell you a little story about that. <laughs> A movie called The Dog's Breakfast. David asked me to be in it. First thing he said, will you shave your legs? That is not true. <laughs> he came in with his leg shaved. He was like, what the hell did you do that for? He said, well, I'm playing woo That was his accent, by the way. He told me, he goes, I have a fantasy. I want to see you in drag. I'm like, okay. And I go put you in a movie. I'm like, all right, this is weird, but okay, I'll do it. Anyway, I remember the one day, uh, actually, he's really great as a director. He's a fantastic, I hate to say, but he's a fantastic actor, and he's very smart and clever, and he's a really good director. Let's get that out of the way. Um, and hopefully, at some point in time, we'll work together again. God, I'm nice. Why am I so nice? But I remember shooting the movie, and David is naked. Uncomfortable. Like one clap. <laughs> Remember the hammer comment? <laughs> Not so much. Anyway, um... <laughs> yeah. It was very cold. <laughs> it was cold. It was very cold. It was really. It was a very large duck. <laughs> Yes, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of soap suds, maybe not so many. Um, on his butt, lying on the mud, camera breaks down. I'm standing up, holding an umbrella over him, in a dress. They're like, action, oh, sorry, you have to change the battery. So I have to hold the umbrella over David's ass because the soap suds are gonna 
dissipate, which no one wants to see underneath those. So I'm holding an umbrella, rain pouring on me in a dress over David lying naked on the ground. And I look at him, he looks up at me, and I go, this better be funny. He goes, yeah, you're telling me. And then I sink into the mud. <laughs> that was my memory of that movie. It was actually, I think it was Martin Wood's suggestion to make your character in drag, basically. He was, because I originally, you were like in this Inspector Clouseau kind of thing. But apparently, but Martin Wood was, was, was offering suggestions on how to you know, help it along. And, he was actually the one who, who suggested that I put you in a dress. That's really yeah. creepy. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. What is right. that? That's Where the shot. That's, that that's the shot right there. there. There you go. The movie on yeah. the phone. That is the coolest phone. You've got your, the movie on your phone. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> there are Available so much suds. <laughs> I told you, I'm having a bad flashback right now. <laughs> and I don't like it, okay? These are your calves. Right? Yeah. So my legs are shaved too in the picture. Wait, wait, hang on, I'm gonna show you. Oh, let's just stop everything and watch the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he in drag? That's his, his, his legs. I know it's his legs. Oh, honey, you're not pretty. <laughs> She's right. I thought it was at first. I'm like, God, I look at him like, no, I don't. Oh, I wish you guys had a camera here with a little screen back here so you could all see this. I don't. Okay, yes. okay next question. question. Please have another kitten. Sorry. Wow. I truly look like a man with a wig on. Yeah. I have good yeah. legs. Oh. Hi, my name is Jennifer. David made me do that. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. I'm listening. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Let me just say you're my favorite doctors on Stargate. And uh, this is a little surreal. But um, let me just say, Paul, you've aged gracefully. <laughs> better be going somewhere. Yes, it better be going somewhere. <laughs> I was wondering, um, did you understand any of the science behind your characters? No. What? <laughs> no, we're making everything up as we go along. It's make-believe. It wasn't real. So let me just get straight. You start by saying he's old. And no, then... Hold on, Jen Jen Jennifer, come back to the mic. <laughs> Can you ask the other question? What, what other question? You know the one I'm talking about. You mean how good looking you are? Oh, hello. <laughs> You're forgiven. I love you. Carry on. Eventually they all break under pressure. <laughs> okay, Kim. Next question. They've given up on questions. Uh, hello. Security. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. David? Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, uh, McKay has a, an uh, aversion or an allergic reaction to citrus. Is there, a, is there a background to that, or is it just a tick part of a complex character? Uh, what was the first part? You know what, can you hold the mic closer yeah, to we him? We're really not hearing. Uh, David, uh, McKay has a allergic uh, response to citrus. Is there a story behind that, or is that just a tick part of his complex character? That was Cooper. That was like, uh, I think, yeah, it was, a uh, uh, Coop came up with that. And it was the first, that was the first episode, and they just thought it was a nice little irritating foible for him to have. And, uh, I think they scored on that one. I think that was, yeah. Because I still, to this day, get a lot of lemons. <laughs> Which I've got to say, if I really was allergic to them, is that smart? <laughs> As it turns out, I just make amazing lemonade. No, that was Coop. Coop came up with that. Robert Cooper. I, I think it was who came up with that. And, and then you ran with it because there's many annoying little ticks he has. Yeah. I, I might be a little bit of a hypochondriac, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, next question. <laughs> What is it's it? Travel long it's long. like an obstacle course. <laughs> you gotta go through an obstacle course in order to answer, ask a question. Yes, to show your devotion. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. We'll just sit here waiting. Yes. Um, 
Hello from New Zealand, by the way. I'm Hello, New Zealand. Oh, I love New Zealand. I'm the queen of the New Zealand squirrels. So. Oh, hey! Is it Jackie? Yes! Yeah, yeah, okay. Jackie. Um, I'm going to be really mean, but I'll, I'll try it. Um, David, this is for you. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I, of course, watched Debug when you uh, previewed it at Armageddon, and I loved it. Oh, wow, thank you. It's a fantastic film. I was wondering, because some of the scenes are quite horrific. My son loved them. <laughs> well, because he got to see them being done. Oh, really? He's like, oh, it's okay, I know how they crush heads. It's fine. <laughs> well, would you consider going into directing for horror? And also, to tie it into everyone else, would you guys consider working with them again or for the first time? Oh god, it was, I mean, I, it, it's, it was, Debug has some absolutely horrific elements in it. It's a horror film, What's basically. It a Debug. A Debug. 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 <laughs> Terrell's a big nerd, too. As, as you can, you can tell. My friend down here is going to show me. She's got her phone going. She's got her phone going. Find it. Um, I forgot the question. <laughs> She's my friend. I wanted to know about Debug and, and oh, how, how horror. horrific I, it is. I love I love the horror genre. I I think it's very specific though. I don't like what I call torture porn. I don't like the stuff that's just people getting hurt. I like a good ghost story. I love there's a grip called torture, torture porn. I call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just people getting what is going on here? It's just people, there's a lot of movies out now that are just people getting hurt, and I don't like that. I like stories, I like characters, I love a good horror film. You know, a good horror film. You have no excuse for the bad beginning of a horror film because it's like you're setting up this wonderful sort of you know what's the what's the issue here type thing and um, so I always I always love horror and there's a great one called The Babadook actually it's out of um, uh, I think it's Australia or New Zealand I don't know which but in a, is it Australia right yes and it's just uh, it's a, a female director and she has in my mind mastered the independent horror film like it's just it's, what did she do what's the name it's called The Babadook. Babadook. It's really creepy, really I creepy. I will never ever watch anything like that. I can't even watch a movie trailer. That's scary. I'm like, no, 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 no. So no, I would love to do more horror. I love horror. I like to be in horror. I am a horror. Um, <laughs> horror or horror, whatever, I'm gonna figure it out. Whoa, whoa, sorry. Horror and, porn? And hello, Jackie, and thank you, squirrels. My name's Alicia. My question is, um, Terrell, in a previous panel, you mentioned that sometimes people think they may have seen you in the medical profession. Um, have you guys ever um, been tempted to use some of your learned medical terminology to talk bullshit? No. <laughs> well, David will answer that question about me. Anyone who gets treated by Beck gets a goner, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but what you used to do was, like, will Terrell suddenly run in and say, Stand back! I'm a doctor on television. <laughs> my, brother, my brother Mike, my young brother who I love, he is actually a doctor, and then when he finished his PhD, you know, years of schooling, and we went back, I went back to Ontario, and we had a little party for them in my parents' backyard, and then Papa, a thing of champagne, and we're making a toast, and I said, I, Mom, if you don't mind, I'd like to make the first toast. And she's like, no problem. And Mike, he's like, good, good sense of humor. I go, so amazing. Um, all the hard work you've done. I'm so proud of you. Your years of school. It's amazing to have another doctor in the family. <laughs> As an exenial biologist, Dr. Beckett, space doctor. <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, you're such an idiot. I'm like, I go, yeah, sorry. Anyway, cheers. <laughs> That's about it. Actors. But people will sometimes come up to me, I don't know about tarot, because people think the medical doctors, they'll go like, um, this is a while back, you know, I have to ask you something. I'm like, what? If anybody understand you would, I have this thing going on in my knee. I'm like, what? <laughs> That was me, Paul. That oh, was, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. Paul, what's going on with me? I'm like, I have no idea, you're a doctor, aren't you? No, I'm pretending. But like, they'd ask, ask you questions, like, I don't know, maybe put some ice on it? A couple of aspirins, call me in the morning? I don't know. All right, next question. Hi, this is for David. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Can someone ask Terrell another question, please? <laughs> 
question. We both answered it for. Sorry, there's been a swirl invasion. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Um, okay, so first off, I am really, really late to the Supernatural party. And so I've been binge watching it lately, and it's like a Stargate who's who. So why have I not seen our esteemed Squirrel King? <laughs> what? Okay, can you put the mic closer to the, the, the poor people's mouths? Because it's back here, it sounds like a different language. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. That's better. That's there better. you go. Wow, there you go. That's just slow. Take your job. Okay. You look gorgeous. So you're late, you're to, the late to the supernatural party. I'm late to the supernatural party. I've been binge watching it lately, and I've right. noticed it's like a Stargate who's who. Well, because it shoots in Vancouver, right? So, yeah. 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 So that's why. But I was just wondering why we have not seen our esteemed Squirrel King. Ah, I see. Um, because they don't like me. <laughs> no, I've actually, I've never been in for it. Well, maybe I have been in for it. If I did, it was a long time ago, so I'm not in Vancouver anymore, so I'll have to go back. Is it good? Yes. Yeah. And those guys are awesome. Yeah. Jared and Jared, super nice guys. They're super nice. Was it season 12 for them, Super right? naturally yeah. nice. Season 11? Season, season 11. 11, wow. Yeah. I got a lot of catching up to do. Maybe that's the problem. I should find I got, I got the crap kicked out of me by Felicia Day oh, last season. <laughs> She's very sexy, by the way. <laughs> Alright, next question. Yes. Yeah. I'm like a huge fan. I saw her and I was like just too embarrassed to say anything. <laughs> so I'm like just like a, I'm a big fan of her. I think what she's done is amazing. Like I just it's just to see like, you know, the nerd queen do so. <laughs> she's amazing. Squirrel King, nerd queen. Yeah. Oh, like that. <laughs> Sorry, Jane. <laughs> Hello. I am Sam David. Love your walk. My question is, uh, did you guys even take these two videos from the show, either legally or just... Yeah, I got a functioning gate in my living room. I live in a puddle jumper. Do you think most of the Destiny sets, right? They, well, they, prop, they, they sold everything in auction. We, we got some of the Destiny sets for, uh, for debug. We were going to use it for debug, but then I, when I, by the time I got to the set, our set designer decided to pull it all apart and change it. So it's like, oh, I'm glad we kept those. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I stole a few little pieces here and there from that. But uh, do you have just, anything for Stargate? Did you take anything? No, your I, costume. Your costume? No, I got no costume. Nothing. I'm trying to think if I that my, my chair back was stolen. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You know who has your chair backs? Jason Momoa. He has my chair back. <laughs> I'm like, why? He goes, I don't know. I thought it was cool. I'm like, what's mine? <laughs> Kick his ass. <laughs> yeah, you do that, Paul. Wait a minute, maybe not. But I did choke him out. Do you guys know that story? I'm guessing we're gonna hear it. Yeah. I get, you guys wanna hear that story? Yeah. So we were out one night, Joe, and you know this, Joe and Jason and myself, and we had you know some scotch and we're out hanging Momo back. Momo and Jojo, as they called it. Yeah, and they they were living together in the same room at the, at the hotel at the time. And Joe, I'd be there before Joe, you go to Joe's place, it's, everything's all neat and stuff like that, right? And then Jason moves in for like two months, because he's like, oh, I'll move with you, man, let's just move the world. Like, we're like brothers. Like, I walk into their place, now there's skulls everywhere in the hotel room, right? Like, drapes. I'm like, what is going on here? What do the people say that they come and clean the room? And he's put up his artwork as well, all of his yeah, art like, stuff. Yeah, everything. Like, it's like his trailer was like skulls and blankets and like, you know. Like, I don't know, everything. Bones and stuff. I'm like, what is going on here? About 10 guitars. I walk, so we go out, we're out drinking. And I was a wrestler in university and stuff. And, then, and Jason starts wrestling me and stuff like that. So I kind of put him in a neck choke and he taps up. Jason Momoa. Yeah, no, you should tell him that. He knows, he knows. Then Flanagan tries to wrestle me. And Joe, I don't fucking wrestle you, Paul. I'm like, Joe, you don't wrestle me. So I put Joe in a neck. I have him, and he's like, kind of like, he's like, eh. And he tapped out. He says he didn't, but he did. And Jason's Jay, Jay, sitting there having a scotch going, Joey, buddy, just tap out, buddy. You're going to get hurt. Just tap out. He's like, I'm not tapping out. I'm not tapping out. <laughs> I let him go. And he's like, the next day he comes in. I go to the chair. I go to the, he's in the makeup before I am. I walk in. No, I'm in the chair. Joe walks in the trail like this. He's like, a pie. Dude, you're strong. Dude, my neck's killing me. <laughs> Yes, you didn't know I did. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn on real quick with this short note. We are getting.
running a little bit lower on time, so I'm just going to give a couple quick announcements Not before good. we take our last question. So, um, one quick announcement is that we are going to be having a starting charity event tonight in the Savannah Room. So, Savannah Ballroom here in the hotel at 8.30. That's going to be lots of fun, games, trivia, and all sorts of good stuff. But also, we are going to be having our Don S. Davis Memorial Charity Auction. And Paul is emceeing, you guys. Honestly, great cause. He does come. I'll be doing it with a Scottish accent. Thank you very much. So you won't understand a word he's saying. Perfect. Just bring him. It's for, for lymphoma this year. And it's an amazing cause. So come out and support for Don S. Davis. I mean, he, like, as Terrell knows him better than all of us. But what a sweet man he was, and he'd be so proud of this charity. So I'm happy to do it, and hope you guys can come out. And it's going to be tomorrow in the Hyatt in Hanover CDE at 4 o'clock, so make sure you're there. Remember, it's for the babies. And I'm bringing a few uh, items that I have from uh, my some of my scripts and stuff like that that I will donate to the charity as well. So some cool things. Yeah, and I'll, I'll ask you guys to sign them. Well. Terrible. David, I don't know. Who knows? Okay, so we Don't have fine. about one more question, or it's maybe two, depending on the question link. Oh, you guys. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Who gets it? <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Zelda. I, I was just wondering if, uh, if you had the chance to choose anybody to work with, actors or directors, who would you really want to work with? Hmm. I've already worked with Paul, so. You know. <laughs> that is so sweet and so unlike you. Totally lying. Yeah. Well, he said he wanted to. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm going to go because they're just going to continue. But I would say Judy Dench. She's my hero. Absolutely love her. Kill her. Bill Murray for me. I'd love to work with Bill Murray. I want to work with Keanu Reeves. And John Wick. Um, th thank you so much, you guys. We're, we're over, I think we, we're going to do a big photo op and then we're doing some signing. Come over and say hi if you want to actually chat with us at our tables and say hi. But thanks so much for having us again here. We love coming to Dragon Con. You guys are awesome. So thank you much. Stop.